Добро пожаловать в штаб квартире Бинков. Welcome to Binkov's headquarters. What makes submarines silent? That question lies central in the role and efficiency of a nuclear attack submarine as a combat system. While the World War submarines were mostly submersible boats, the start of the Cold War saw their usage change, especially with the advent of nuclear-fueled submarines. With change to near-continuously submerged operations, importance of producing as little noise as possible grew even more. So what was done during history to silence submarines? Striving towards as little machinery as possible. The less engines, reactors, turbines, pumps, reduction gears and shafts there are, the less opportunity for noise there is. Generally, a single reactor powering a single turbine turning a single shaft would be least noisy. But technology and submarine volume constraints led to solutions of multiple reactors or shafts to power the initial submarines. As technology progressed during Cold War, that changed. Soviets lagged in that regard a decade or two with attack subs, and more so still with heavier submarine classes. On the other hand, Soviet Akula class uses a single turbine, while modern US designs still use two. While reactors in themselves are pretty silent, they do need cooling. Initially, they required pumps to circulate coolant water constantly, but later in the Cold War, designs with natural water circulation appeared, cooling the reactor. At higher reactor output settings, pumps do have to be used, but for slow or medium speeds, they can remain silent. Another major contribution to noise are machinery vibrations in general. The nuclear reactor heats up water and makes steam, which then powers the steam turbines. Due to various speed settings and reverse speed requirement, reduction gear is always needed to actually transfer power to the shaft. While the turbine itself isn't very noisy, there are many other links and gears within the power plant that interact with each other and grind against each other before the final output at the propeller. One major breakthrough was suspending the machinery inside submarine onto rafts, basically dampening vibrations. Insulating insides of the submarine with the material absorbing some sounds also helps, but both rafting and insulation can be volume demanding, as they increase the diameter of the hull needed, making submarine larger and heavier. Even though that required use of more powerful power plants, the trade-off was worth it, as submarines became distinctly quieter. Anechoic tiles are another form of insulation, though they come added to the outer hull of the submarine. While they too dampen sounds coming within the sub to a degree, their primary use is to absorb active sonar frequencies that the enemy might use against the submarine. Computers made huge impact on submarine quieting through simulations, modeling and computer-controlled milling machines. To bring down the machinery noise even further, very fine tolerances for production of various bits and pieces were used. No longer produced by analog devices, but by CNC machines, tolerances were made so fine that grinding between parts was reduced greatly. That was further helped with 3D digital models made in first CAD programs. Moving on to external noise sources. When water is forced to change direction, like by the turning propeller, cavitation can appear. It is formation of small waterless voids due to pressure differences. It can be a major noise source. Those voids then quickly implode, making noise in the process. The faster a screw turns, the more likely is more cavitation will occur. Slow-moving submarines are thus mostly free of cavitation, but moving faster is often a must. Propeller design is crucial to alleviate that problem. Another propeller issue is noise generated by the blades hitting the wake left by the control surfaces in front of them. The US, thanks to the precise computer models and simulations, managed to produce what's called a skewback propeller. It both solved the blade rate problem and lowered generated cavitation even at higher speeds. Before skewback use, 
Soviets had a semi-solution to the problem, by using two small tandem screws on a single shaft. Drawback to skewback is the fact it is less efficient, leading to roughly 10% lower speeds. Yet with silence being paramount, all submarines today use it, except for those which use even newer solutions. Most recent submarines use shrouded propulsors instead of screws. They also share some features with pump jet propulsors. They generate even less cavitation and they also prevent the generated noise to spread to the sides to some degree. Their drawbacks include higher mass and further reduced power, so they are not as efficient solution on power constrained vessels, like diesel submarines. Another way of dealing with cavitation is managing the submarine's crews. The deeper it goes, the less cavitation will occur. That is because higher environment pressure can delay cavitation from occurring at speeds that would otherwise create cavitation closer to the surface. One area where certain Soviet submarines were ahead of NATO ones was depths they were designed for. While Soviets lagged in overall silencing of their vessels, they could somewhat compensate for that by going deeper at times. But submarine doesn't always need to go very deep to manage noise. It can just go below the thermal layer in the ocean. Its depth changes with water temperature. When a submarine is below it, the noise it generates can be confined below the layer to a great degree as the layer acts as a wall to most sound frequencies. That means surface sonars have a harder time detecting submarines, but towed and variable depth sonars operated below the layers as well as enemy submarines also going below those layers can still listen to them quite well. Of course, that cuts both ways, so a submarine can have a hard time listening to ships above, if there's the thermal layer between them. While a lot has been done to quieting of nuclear submarines, even more will be done in the future. Next generation nuclear submarines are going more electric as various countries are expected to switch to all-electric propulsion. Steam turbines will make electricity, which will then power the electric motor, turning the screw. Thus the reduction gearing will be omitted, which is one of bigger noise sources. With continued improvements, nuclear submarines are poised to remain the silent killers, some of most dangerous opponents in naval warfare. But more about submarine warfare and other non-nuclear submarines in general, we'll have to wait for some other video. If you would like to know more about beginnings of submarine warfare, our friend over at Military History Visualized has a video on World War I and World War II submarine warfare. Check it out! As usual, feel free to subscribe. And if you really like my videos, you can support me via the above link through the Patreon crowdfunding website. And if you'd like to see a specific pair to be made into a video, hop over to my website, using the link above. And there you can submit pairs you'd like to see, as well as vote in my monthly poll, deciding which videos will be made. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.